Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm about to throw down in this kitchen. I am gonna make my famous spicy shrimp and cabbage stir fry. So if you wanna see how I make this stir fry, keep watching. Brown skin fierce pretty like awa. I be limited the dish and body at higher papa. Me irregular them come on like a vanilla. Sweet honey, they my bit of vinegar. So the things you'll need for this recipe are a bag of raw shrimp. If you decide to, you can definitely get the cooked one, but I like this one better. You'll also need some cabbage and broccoli, onions. For the stir fry sauce, you'll need some crushed ginger, minced garlic, fish sauce, sriracha, hot chili sauce, honey, but I am using the zero carb maple syrup, soy sauce, and oyster sauce. All right, so first things first, we're gonna have to clean these bad boys. I love these raw shrimps, but there's a lot of maintenance that's required until it gets to the point where you can cook them. So these are the colossal shrimps. I got them from Stop and Shop, and I tend to always buy these shrimps because they are so large and so juicy. I don't like the cooked ones because in my opinion, by the time you put them on the stove one to two minutes, you gotta take them off or else they're gonna be super hard and hella dry. So I like juicy shrimp, so I buy the raw ones because to me, you can really cook them, get them off the stove and they're still nice, plumped and juicy. So I am a lover of all things seafood. I love every kind of fish. I like oysters, I like clams, I like mussels, I love shrimp. So I tend to make some type of seafood dish in my home at least a couple times a month. So like I said, you just want to make sure that you thoroughly clean these shrimps. It does take some time, but trust me guys, it is definitely worth it in the end. So I'm all done with cleaning the shrimp and guys, I am so hungry right now. I really need to rush on this recipe. So I'm just taking all the trash from the shrimp and I'm putting it back inside of this bag. It's a Ziploc bag. I just zip it on up and I take it to the garbage and hubby will take the trash outside later because you definitely don't wanna have that sitting in your house because that is a pretty strong smell. So I'm just washing my hands thoroughly so I can get that seafood smell off my hands. Now I'm gonna grab some vinegar so I can thoroughly wash this shrimp. Guys, you need to always make sure that you at least have vinegar, lime, or lemon in your house to thoroughly wash the meat before you prepare it. These are the only things that will for sure get the bacteria off the meat before you prepare it. Now, being a Jamaican woman, there are a few things that I did learn from my mother. And if all else fails, if you do not have any vinegar or any lime or lemon to wash your meat, girl, just go ahead and grab some salt and put the salt in the water and let the meat soak in the salt. That is another way to get the bacteria off the meat. So after I wash the meat with the vinegar, I'm just gonna rinse it a couple times just to make sure that there's no vinegar still left on the shrimp. Then I'm just gonna drain all the water from the shrimp. Just make sure you get it as dry as possible before you add the seasoning. Now I'm gonna cut these shrimps in half so the food will stretch a little bit more like I said, these are the colossal shrimps. So when you cut them in half, you're still getting really big pieces of shrimp within your stir fry. Now, if you wanted to keep them whole, you can. However, I do like to make sure that I'm picking up shrimp with 
every bit of stir fry that I'm about to put inside my mouth. So I want to make sure that there's enough shrimp to go around. The worst thing is to make a meal and all the goodness of the meat is out of the food. And the only thing that's left are the veggies. Let's add some flavor to this shrimp. The first thing I'm going to add is some Goya adobo. I know you guys must be saying, damn, she got a whole lot of seasoning to the side. And I know most of you just use some salt and pepper, but I like to make sure that my meat is well seasoned, well flavorful, enough flavor. Next thing I'm going to add is some onion salt. Now, don't go crazy with the seasoning. We want to make sure everything is well seasoned, not salty. So I've made this recipe a ton of times, so I don't measure out how much seasoning I'm going to use. However, if you are not sure as to how much seasoning to use, just put a little at a time and taste it until it's to your taste. Next, you want to add some Old Bay seasoning. So I love this damn Old Bay seasoning. It's so good. I put this on everything if i'm making burgers if i'm making the salad if i'm making steak hot wings anything i put this old bay on it has really good flavor then go ahead and put on some garlic powder i love the taste of garlic i think garlic makes everything taste better I'm also going to add some paprika because I do really like the smoky taste of paprika on my meat. It really does give it a nice flavor. Next, I'm going to add some black pepper. Just toss that bad boy on top. And then lastly, I'm going to add some pink Himalayan salt. Now, I do favor this salt more than a typical white table salt. Um, it's definitely better for you. And to me, it tastes a lot better. Go ahead and mix everything up and make sure that all of the shrimp is fully coated with the seasoning. We want our food to be well flavorful. Normally, after seasoning the shrimp, I would place it in the fridge overnight or for a few hours. But for the sake of this video, I am going to make this shrimp right away. However, if you do have the time, go ahead and season this from the night before or the morning of before making it. And trust me, you will taste a big difference in the flavor of this dish. Looks good to me. So now I'm gonna cut up the onions. You can use as many or as little onions as you'd like. I like to cut them in medium to small pieces, but it's totally up to you however you like them. You also can add any other type of veggies that you like. You can add in some sweet peppers, the green ones. You can add in some red peppers, some yellow peppers, anything that you'd like. Now for the star of the show. So the amount of sauce that I'm making complements the amount of stir fry that I'm making. If you're making a larger portion stir fry, just make more sauce. I just added in a half cup of low sodium soy sauce. Next, I'm going to add in a tablespoon of fish sauce. Now this sauce has an extremely strong odor, so a little bit goes a very long way. Next, I'm going to add in some minced garlic. You can also add the crushed garlic as well, but I prefer to use the mince. Just get that in there. Then I'm going to go ahead and add in some ginger. I put ginger in everything. I love the taste of ginger. I feel like it definitely adds some really good flavor to your food. Now it's time for the heat. I'm going to add in a tablespoon and a little over of some sriracha chili sauce. I love the flavor of sriracha. If you don't like a lot of heat in your food, then just be pretty mindful of how much you're putting into this sauce. But my family, we love the heat. So I'm not wasting any of this sauce. Then I'm going to add in some oyster sauce. Oyster sauce has a really good flavor. And anytime you're making any kind of stir fry, um, you should add in some oyster sauce because it really does improve the flavor of your dish. So just go ahead and get all that in there. Don't waste anything. 
All right. After I've added the oyster sauce, then I'm going to add some sweetness to this sauce. Now you can go ahead and use honey. I am going to use a zero carb sugar-free maple syrup. It gives it the same exact taste minus all the carbs. Now, as you can see, this maple syrup is used pretty frequently within my household because the damn bottle is almost done. We use this all the time for the keto pancakes or any keto waffles that I'm making. So this is the only maple pancake type sauce that I use in my household. Go ahead and mix everything together. Make sure that all the ingredients are well blended. Just use your fork and kind of beat it together. You can also use a whisk and whisk everything together. Now go ahead and taste your sauce and make sure that it's to your liking and mine's is right on point. Now go ahead and grab your skillet or a wok and add in the desired amount of oil. I'm adding in some avocado oil, but feel free to use extra virgin olive oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, anything that you'd like. I'm also going to add in the last bit of of sesame oil that I have left. I cannot find this damn sesame oil in stores anywhere. I had no damn clue that the corona pandemic would have people going crazy and buying up all the sesame oil. However, I put whatever I had left in the pot and I just mixed it in with the avocado oil. Once the pot is well hot, just go ahead and add in your shrimp. Saute the shrimp until they are nice pink and plumped. Just continue to toss the shrimp until they are fully cooked and then you're going to want to remove the shrimp from the heat and rest them to the side. Just be careful not to overcook the shrimp. You just want to make sure that they are pink and plumped. Guys, this smells so good. <sighs> All right, go ahead and add in some minced garlic to the pot and get that sizzle going. Then you're going to add in the diced onions and you're just going to saute the onions and the garlic together until they are slightly translucent in color. Go ahead and add in your shredded cabbage. I like to shred my cabbage very fine because when they're cooked, they kind of remind me of noodles. So it gives me a feeling as if I'm eating some Chinese lao mein noodles. And especially with the sesame oil and the other Asian flavors that I add to this dish, it definitely makes me feel like I'm eating legit noodles. Now, as you can see, I do have a lot of cabbage shredded. All of this cabbage is not for this stir fry. I do intend on making something else with it later on today. Go ahead and add in some butter to the cabbage. You can add as much or as little as you like. You're also going to add in a small amount of water. Just don't go crazy with it. Then just stir everything up. Then I'm going to add in some crushed ginger. Just put as much as you'd like. Stir it up. Then you're going to want to go and add in your pieces of broccoli. Go ahead and add in as much or as little as you'd like. When I'm adding the broccoli, I like the pieces to be reasonably small. I like them to be bite-sized pieces. You can cut them larger. You can make them smaller. You don't even have to add in broccoli if you don't like broccoli. Um, this is just a preference. You're going to want to add in some salt. Of course, I'm going to add in some pink Himalayan salt. Then grab some pepper and add in your desired amount. Now you're going to want to cover up the pot and let it steam anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes on medium to high heat. What's been cooking for about 5 minutes, I'm just going to go ahead and stir everything up. And then I am going to also add in some carrots. So at this point, the cabbage is basically cooked. You don't want to overcook this because you definitely want it to still have a nice crunch. You don't want the cabbage to end up soggy. 
Now it's time for the star of the show. Just go ahead and mix it up a little, then pour it all over the stir fry. Once you get all of the sauce in, go ahead and add in your shrimp. Now just stir everything together until the stir fry is well incorporated and the sauce is nice and bubbly. Now that everything is fully heated, go ahead and turn off your stove and there you have it. Spicy shrimp and cabbage stir fry. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see. I'm gonna get a little bit of everything. So I have some shrimp, I have broccoli, and I have some cabbage. See this, guys? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The sriracha makes it so hot, but in a good way. And the oyster and fish sauce gives it so much flavor. I know this looks like a lot on the fork, but it really isn't. Mmm, oh. guys. So for me, this is the perfect meal. I don't need anything else. I don't need any rice. The only thing I may put at the side of this is some avocado. So good. All right, guys, thanks again for watching so I can share my recipe with you. If you have your own shrimp recipe that you'd like to share, I'd love to see it. Just go ahead and leave that recipe down below in the comment box. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you will be notified every single time I post a brand new video. All right, thanks for watching. Don't judge me. I guess I should end the video now, right? <laughs>